Hey ladies and gentlemen, we are back today with another unboxing and I have a few surprises for you. Number one, like always, is our little gray box. But number two is that I am outside of our normal studio and I am in Tucson, Arizona. Tucson is the home of the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, which is like the coolest thing in gemology. Some of this stuff is out of this world cool. And I am so excited to be able to share with you what I've learned and what I've seen and we can learn a little bit more about gemology and geology together. So I've got my white card. Ooh, it's folded fancy today. What? What? Guys, there's nothing on this. Oh, you're punking me. Okay, what is this? I'm stumped, everyone. Totally. It looks like Gatorade. gatorade -ite. This is a gemstone, and I think it looks like Gatorade. First thing I noticed was the color. Second thing was the doubling. Each of the facets, it looks like there's two of them. You know, like when you are, oh gosh, I don't even know how to describe this. It's kind of like you're seeing double vision. Like if you don't have your glasses on, or if you got hit in the head too hard playing baseball or whatever. That's what this gemstone reminds me of right now, because I'm actually seeing almost double culids. I assume I'm not allowed to pull it out of the box because it's in a box for a reason and we've learned very well here on the unboxing show. Don't shake things, smaller pieces, and don't throw things light or don't pull things out of boxes that aren't meant to be in a box. The cut's pretty. I like the pear shape. It's a fairly large stone. You know, with all this, I still have no clue what this is. Oh geez, what should I do? I think I have an idea. We're gonna pull in another gem nerd who is gonna tell us all about this. He is a gemstone cutter. He's gonna tell us what this is, why this is cool, and why it looks like Gatorade. YouTube, say hi to Scott Suker. Hi, you there's a lot of people out there watching nice to us. See ya. He's a fellow gem nerd. I can call you that, right? Oh, you're, you you're, not, you're okay I, with that? I'm the Uber nerd. You're, and why are you an Uber nerd? I was a drone test pilot for Google in my last job before I retired. We're gonna play a little question game here, All Scott. Right. What is this? Well, you guessed the double refraction correctly. Okay, so it's not Gatorade-ite, because that uh, doesn't exist. And it's not Jell-O-ite. <laughs> I will tell you that it is so heat sensitive that if you were to put the stone in your hand, the thermal shock can crack it. You must like this gemstone. I like the challenge in cutting it. Most cutters would not even attempt Okay, so tell us why it is such a challenge to cut. It's very, very soft. has a hardness of one and a half to two and a half, depending on the crystal orientation. All right, what is this thing? Well, I just gave you the hardness and the color is right there. Can't be that hard. I am thoroughly stumped. I'm guessing this is something you don't ever see in jewelry. No, you would never see this in jewelry. It's okay. way too soft, way too fragile, and definitely a collector's stone because of that. How much do you think it weighs? How much do you think I weigh? It weighs, say... not you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy guacamole. 30, 40 carats? 50 carats? It weighs just a shy less than 20 carats. No So it's way. very, very lightweight. Guys, this is a head scratcher. Scott, you've met my gray box. I have my own gray box. You, they didn't put the card in there. No, they didn't, but they didn't that's because I know what it is. I know. Yeah. I'm For ready. The grand unveil. I'm gonna take it off, ready? Okay, ready, you can ready. take it off. Can we get a drum roll? Holy now, God. Am I allowed to touch to give, this? Try to, touch. to minimize your touching. This is a modified crystal of that material. This is untouched. This is as it came out of the ground. I love the markings on the side. Yes, the etching is absolutely remarkable. That is remarkable. fantastic. All right, so can you tell me why I'm not allowed to touch this material? Because it's the heat sensitivity. Okay. More so than anything else. Even something as hard as one and a half to two and a half, which is extremely soft. I mean, it's about as soft as your fingernail. So I could theoretically scratch this Theoretically, you could scratch it with your fingernail. So hardness, though, really isn't the critical issue. It's the thermal shock from the heat from your hands. Fun fact, everyone, I was a waitress. I would take the glasses out of the dishwasher. And one time I made the mistake of putting ice in one of those glasses really quick and it shattered. Yes. That's a perfect example of thermal shocks. Three, two, one, you're gonna tell me the name. Ready? All right. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. It's a sulfur. No way. Never would have so guessed that. So you have your nice crystal of sulfur. And this is probably such a nice crystal, I probably wouldn't cut it, but I say that for the crystallographers no. out there. I will end up cutting it. Lol. Whenever I think of sulfur, I think of that awful eggy smell. Correct. When you're cutting this, do you get that awful egg smell? You can, I do not, because I cut it under oil as opposed to water. If I used water, it would definitely oxidize and you would get that rotten egg mm. smell. I never would have guessed this. I have seen, outside of my own collection, three other sulfurs. They were this color, or at least some shade of yellow. Okay. Sulfur can tend more towards the green. Sometimes it can tend a little bit more towards the red. This is very interesting sulfur. This comes from Vodino, Russia. Now, most people will say that sulfur has a volcanic origin. Okay. This is not volcanic. 
Mm -hmm. This is sedimentary. So anybody who knows the sulfur chemistry will go, how in the heck can this possibly be sedimentary? Because you don't true. exactly find this in beach sand. So explain that for all of our geology friends. Because okay. you know, we've got gem lovers and geology lovers watching. Sure. So let's go a little bit into that. All right. Most of your sulfur is due to volcanism. So by volcanic vents and it comes out of the ground, and sometimes as a gas, and it crystallizes right near the hole that it comes out. So that's volcanic. In this particular case, it's actually found in these large large cavities called vugs inside a limestone layer. Okay. And these cavities are filled with bitumen, otherwise known as tar. And if you look on the surface of this crystal, you can see some of the black. And that's the You're leftover right. tar. That's pretty cool. Now I have a chemistry degree, so what I'm thinking is happening is that the free carbon in the tar is reacting and it's freeing the sulfur that can now crystallize very slowly. Now, if this is by a volcanic vent, it's coming out very quick. What would possess you to cut sulfur? Because it's there. Same reason you climb Mount Everest. It's the challenge. The material is soft, as we've already mentioned, so mm -hmm. that requires certain considerations. Okay. It's very heat sensitive, so even when I'm cutting it, I can't touch it directly. Do you put it on a dop? I put it on a dop, okay. but I have, to, I have to put it on a special dop. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Of course. Now, for those that don't know the cutting process, you have a dop stick, you have your stone, and in my case, I glue the two together. In order to weaken the glue so I can separate it, I have to put it in vinegar. Vinegar will attack any metal dop, iron, aluminum, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I have to make my own glass dops. Usually dops, when you're cutting, they're usually wooden sticks and they usually have wax on the end. So what you do is you heat up the wax over fire and then you attach it to the gemstone. Correct. I imagine you couldn't do that because of the heat sensitivity. Even the wax would... Oh, most definitely. That's pretty wild. Yes. Okay, so how long did it take you to cut this stone? This particular stone probably took me about two months but there were other four failed stones before this while I worked out the technological issues. Which glue to use, a dop stick to use, the procedures in cutting, what kind of a grit do I use? Most stones are cut on a rotating metal lap right. that just revolving with different kinds of grit. Can't do that with a sulfur. If you touch that to a metal lap, it would just shatter on contact. I actually have to hold the stone by hand and rub it. Stones, when they're cut, when you're fashioning them, they're designed to reflect light. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, they reflect energy and they concentrate it on the other side. Sulfur can't stand it and you lose chunks. When you decided to cut this, were you, you must have been pretty afraid. Can you tell us a little about what the process was like deciding to cut this and where you got the material? The decision to cut it wasn't hard just because it's something I've never done and it's pretty cool. And yeah, I'd say so. If you do it successfully, it kind of puts you in the pantheon of fanciters. Okay, what is harder, drones at Google or cutting sulfur? I would have to say cutting the sulfur. Sorry, Google. Yeah, sorry guys. Sorry guys. This is a fairly perfect crystal of sulfur. Yeah, you can beautiful. see the crystal form. From the crystal form, you can determine the optic axis, which by the way, this material is not really cloudy. It is as transparent as a piece of glass. What makes it look hazy is the double refraction That's what that I doubles see. the facets. And as a result, it fuzzes them out a little bit. Now in the box, I can show you, you can hold this up to the light. This right. is a massive sulfur crystal. It's not gonna explode? No. Okay. Look at how transparent that piece is. You could read a newspaper behind it. So when I cut it, if I can orient it along the optic axis, which gets rid of that doubling, it should be a stone that is just as pretty as any other yellow stone out there. This whole city is full of gem nerds and gem yes. lovers. How many people have guessed what this is? I was actually, uh, gave a presentation yesterday to okay. about 100 appraisers and I believe none of them got it. I met somebody else from JTV yesterday and it only took her about five seconds. Yeah, she's so a- So obviously a very sharp individual. To you, what's the coolest thing about cutting sulfur and about having this gem? Just this being gem. successful and showing it to other people. Again, this is probably the largest cut sulfur maybe you'll see in decades, if not the rest of your life. Now I'm hoping that this big piece here, I have another 15 pieces to practice on. This weighs 750 carats. Okay. So I'm hoping when I'm done that I can end up with a 250 carat stone. In other words, one 12 times bigger than that. Holy moly. All right, so would you cut this one? That's kind of cool. Like it is kind of cool. And quite frankly, I've been thinking about concave faceting it. Instead of putting the flat facets on a sulfur, you're putting curved facets on it. 
To my knowledge, nobody's ever done it before. And I've discussed this with both Dalen Hargrave and John Dyer, who are both well-known concave fasteners. They are the celebrities of the gemstone cutting They're world. number one and number two on the planet. I have an experimental piece with me. And unfortunately, because of the strong double refraction, hold out your fingers like this. Now we may shatter the stone, but I can always make another one. Are you serious? But on the back side, I have made two small concave facets. Cutting this sulfur is far more labor intensive than cutting your run of the mill sapphire ruby. Oh, most definitely, cool. because there's so much care that has to go into it. You've worked up really hard on this. I did. Are you ever gonna sell it? That one is actually scheduled to go as a mineral example to the Fersman Mineralogical Museum in Moscow. Tell our YouTube fans out there what's the one thing that they need to remember about this episode. That the stone exists. All right, there you have it. The stone exists. And I am so, so excited to have this with me today and to see all of your cutting. You know, I've cut gemstones myself. I did a cabochon. Well, that's a start. It was really tough. Yeah, Mine yeah. was all lopsided <laughs> and I am not not meant to be a gemstone cutter. I think I'm gonna keep my day job here on YouTube. It comes with experience. It is really, really tough. Well, I do have some of my failures here because one should not just look at the successes, they should look at the failures. Good life lesson. This particular one here, you will notice how frosty that surface is in trying to weakened the epoxy the first time I used alcohol. And then I found out that sulfur is soluble in alcohol. It dissolves a little bit. So that's why the surface is frosty. Now this particular failure is not only frosty, but you can see a big pit in the surface of it. Yeah, what's that from? That's wild looking. Well, that was extremely frustrating because what happens is that if you have your dop stick and your stone and you're trying to weaken your glue, at some point the glue gets weak enough that the stick falls off. But those last few molecules of sulfur pull off with it. What is your piece of advice for getting into the world of gemstones? Well, if you want to get in as a gem cutter, it's not all that hard. I know I could teach somebody in a weekend from start to finish and you'd create two stones. And you would understand the basics enough that you could go home and cut a stone on your Practice. own. Really, it's not that hard to create a stone, but it can take a while to consistently create a very good stone. Did you have fun today with YouTube? Oh, I had fun. This is a hoop. Scott, favorite thing on the YouTube show is when we take a closer look. I'm not gonna have you do that today. Is that okay with you? Oh, that's Guest on the show. Yes, gets the, gets the I feel part. so honored. What's interesting about this stone, because it's so soft, you'll see very, very small scratches and grooves on the surface of the facet. We know that if you take a look at a diamond, all the facets are perfectly flat. That's true. If you take a look at this stone close up, not through the plastic, you'll see that there's just very, very some slight facet rounding where the edges are just rounded over just a little bit. you enjoyed having Scott today on our show. I know I certainly did, and I learned all about sulfur. Never knew you could cut it before. Totally stumped me. If you want to see gemstones in the future and you want to learn more about the awesome world of gemology and where your special niche is, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, leave me a comment about what your favorite thing was that you learned today. Thanks for watching.